Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for attending this meeting this afternoon with some of our elected officials to discuss some of the issues which are important to us all here today. Um, my name is Steve Packwood. I'm a member of the Government Advisory Committee. Um, we also have here Joe Betancourt on our committee. We have Scott Black. We have Margaret Carroll, who's our chair lady, chairperson, whatever we say now. Um, we have Greg Greedy and Susan Kirk is not here today. Did I miss anybody out from our little group? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, yes. And we have my, um, Mike Paulson here too. Um, I think Mike Braddock's here, isn't he? Is Mike, yeah, Mike Braddock from our board is here. Welcome, sir. Appreciate it. And I'd like to welcome our speakers here today as well. We have, first of all, Mayor of Loudoun County, Buddy Bradshaw. We have Henry Cullen, who is our District 7 representative on the Loudoun County Commission. And lastly, we have Sheriff Jim da Jimmy Davis, excuse me, who is our Loudoun County Sheriff. Okay. Now, I'd like to ask a favor here. Is there anybody who, who's retired military? Could I get one of you guys to stand up and give us the Pledge of Allegiance? Would you be feel comfortable with that? I, I, I was military, but it was a different country, so I'm going to... To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think it's very important that we start our meetings with that, as it kind of represents why we're all here and why we're interested in what's going on with these gentlemen. It's all very, very important to us. Um, we're a nonpartisan organization, the Government Advisory Committee, completely nonpartisan. We operate these forums with the goal to maintain a certain amount of proper decorum and respect for all of the participants and everybody's in attendance here. And in view of this, we've decided to make use of a piece of paper that I put on your desk there, on the drawer there, which is actually the Roberts Rules of Order. Okay, on to how to handle meetings. I'd like to do this real quickly because it's going to be important as to how we're going to handle this meeting. When we have questions from the audience, questions will only be asked at the microphone. Okay, when we ask for people to do questions, we request that you line up in a line there and one at a time come up to the microphone to ask your question. I'm going to limit the question to each individual question to one minute. Okay, that way we can get through as many questions as we possibly can in that period of time without upsetting any kind of time deficits. Um, or when your one minute is up, a little red light will appear on your, the, the, the podium up there um, to tell you one minute is up. At that point, we'd like to request, please, take your seat and then you can then join. If you have a second question, or you want to do a follow-up question, we have no problems with that. Just please, for the sake of everybody else, if you would once again stand in line to go through the procedure again, we'll get to everybody. But we'd like to restrict it to one question at a time. And um, if you wish to ask it to a specific individual, by all means, or if you want it to the group, by all means, go ahead. Um, we would request that people are behaved and, in, and courteous of everybody and we do not like disruptive behavior, and we don't want that. We want it to be a good, a good, a good conversational piece where all can have a conversation in a meaningful and polite manner. That's my goal as moderator today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off here by asking, asking each of our uh, guests here if they'd like to start off by giving a little bit of a three-minute explanation as to who you are and why you are. But I'd like to add something to that. Um, and I'm always curious about this. I'd like to know if you could answer is why did you ever get involved in politics in the first place or law enforcement? Would you, Buddy, could we start off with you on that? Thank you, Steve. The, uh, my name is Buddy Bradshaw. I'm in my third term as Loudoun County Mayor. Um, over these last 10 years, we've done some great things, incredible things. Um, you know, we, we've seen record fund balances. Uh, we had six out of the last seven years, we've had clean audits from the comptroller's office. Um, you know, little things like that, and that kind of ties into why I ran for office 10 years ago. I sat down, <clears throat> actually it was uh, January 31st, 2013, and I told my wife, I think I'm running for mayor. 
And she goes, have you lost your mind? I said, well, probably. <laughs> but a lot of, we were at a crossroads as a family, and a lot of prayer went into it. In the, the, in the, and I'm a, I'm a strong about Christian. I hope everyone here is. Um, I have a very, I rely a lot on my faith. And the harder I prayed, the more it was apparent that that's what I was supposed to do. And I can, when you've got, if you, everybody's got to go to hour, I can tell you stories that will shiver your spine that the, the, what the Lord's done in my life. But here we were. My dad uh, was very active politically, never a politician, uh, but he was very active politically. And so we sat down. We put a grassroots campaign together. Uh, you know, started out, everybody I talked to, you can't win. You can't win. You can't win. You're going to get beat 30, 70. You know, that's all I heard was you can't win, you can't win. And that just motivated me all the more. I love this county. I was born here, raised here. My grandmother's property is the, the last property not taken by TVA at the end of the Mia Local Cove. I grew up in that water out there at the Cove. That's where I, we spent every weekend just about. And so we were in the news or the newspaper for all the wrong reasons. This, this is an incredible place to live. There's no place like Loudoun County, Tennessee to live. It's beautiful here. We have so many great things to offer. But we were just in the paper for all kinds of wrong things. Um, you know, there was a lot of controversy there going on, and I wanted to put it to bed. I wanted to build bridges back, and mend bridges, and build new bridges, and put us on the map for the right reasons. Um, like I said, I ran, beat on, I don't know how many doors. Uh, and as I, every week, it seemed like somebody else would say, I'm going to beat on doors with you. I want to beat on doors with you, too. And it built and built, and 143 votes uh, the night of election. Actually lost early voting. The day of, I won and made it up and won by 143 votes uh, on May the 6th, 2014. Uh, just an unbelievable experience I've had. The, uh, I've built a team. The success we've had as a county, don't think that's a me, because it's not. It's the people that put in the work, the hard work every day. And I've built an incredible team around to support this county, to help run this county. And, I, you know, as much as... Uh, I'd like to take all the credit for it. It's not. But these people, we now take pride in our work. You don't get six out of seven clean audits if you don't take pride in your work. That's from the guy that hits the button at the convenience center all the way to the finance director and the purchasing director. We take pride in our work again, and we work every day to make Loudoun County better tomorrow than it was today. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Um, next, I'd like to have Mr. Henry Cullen talk to us. He's our representative on the Loudoun County Commission. Mr. Cullen, please, three minutes. Once again, I'd like to ask you, why would you ever get involved in politics? Should <laughs> <laughs> well, as, as I said, I'm Henry Cullen. I'm the Loudoun County Commissioner from District 7, also the County Commission Chairman. I've been in Teleco Village for 21 years. So as they say in East Tennessee, I know where the bodies are buried. <laughs> but I moved here from Atlanta. I retired in Atlanta from Ford Motor Company. I joined the fire department in 2003, 2004. I was elected chief from 2004 to 2012 with a group of dedicated volunteers, 17. We took it out of the ashes, put the model in place that has turned it into the most respected organization in the village, along with Loudoun County. Now somebody said, how'd you learn the fire service? My dad was fire chief. But anyway, 2012, I sat, stood down after I got the addition done to the firehouse. Spent a couple of years with my grandkids burning up fossil fuel on the lake. We had Camp Mimi, my wife's in the back. They would come down and visit, and we'd have a grand old time. But like everything else, time marches on. They're mostly all out of college and on their own. 2013, I guess towards the end, Don Miller, affectionately known as the Village Don, said he wasn't going to run for another term. My phone started ringing off the hook. Are you going to run? I said, people, I'm not a politician. I'm not smooth. I'm not very tactful at times. 
I call it the way it is and walk away. Never ask a question that I don't already know the answer to, and I never start a fight that I know I can't win. Well, anyway, they kept calling me and calling me and calling me. And a good friend who I have the utmost respect for was Jimmy's boss. Sheriff Guider called me and said, why don't you pull a petition and run? And I did. And I won. <laughs> 2014, 2018, 2022. And I'm going to tell you this. If it wasn't for 34 years with Ford and the experience of managing budgets, HR, and all the things that go into it, I'd have probably folded my tent after four years. I make my home here with my wife of 57 years. And I'll tell you this, she's going to get mad at me tonight when I go home. She was two grades ahead of me in grammar school, and no van I didn't flunk twice. <laughs> but anyway, we had three boys. Unfortunately, we lost the oldest boy along the way. But I'm happy to serve the community, and I'll tell you this, I always watch out for my friends and neighbors in the village, your best interest, as well as the rest of Loudoun County. Thank you so much. Lastly, but not least, Sheriff, in the corner there, I'm not going to ask you why you got involved in politics, because ex-law enforcement, I know you don't want to get involved in politics, right. but please, why did you decide to become in law enforcement then? How's that sound? Sounds great. Uh, actually, I was, uh, like the mayor, I was born and raised here and lived here my whole life and uh, was in the restaurant business. My parents had a restaurant when I was young in high school, so uh, no child labor laws broken there. But anyway, uh, that's the direction I was going to go. And then I uh, worked at Calhoun's when it opened up, and then I just got bored with the profession of, of cooking and uh, maybe thought about being a professional chef, but it was just no, I didn't see a future in it or an end goal. So I wanted to get into to helping people and I'm from this community, I've been here my whole life. And at 23, I decided I was just going to actually go and join the rescue squad just to try to help out in something emergency services. A friend of mine that I worked with asked, well, why didn't I join the auxiliary police, which is a volunteer agency, it's now the Loudoun County Sheriff's Office Reserves. It was the old under the uh, uh, civil, Civil Defense Auxiliary. Uh, so I joined that as a volunteer in 1994 and fell in love with the profession uh, and still in love with the profession of uh, law enforcement. Uh, there's nothing like pulling into someone's driveway and handling a problem that they may have and, and fixing that for them and feeling a sense of accomplishment every day, every call that you've helped somebody. Obviously there's tragedy that comes with that and heartache that comes with that, uh, being in emergency services, but I still feel if there was something that needed to be done, I wanted to do it. Uh, and that served me well as I moved up the ranks through the sheriff's office working in corrections, patrol, patrol supervisor, uh, then into administration in 2005. Um, I became assistant chief in 2005 after we had a, in the line of duty death, and we had some issues uh, with a, a district attorney general uh, when they needed someone to help out on the administrative side of the law enforcement of the sheriff's office and one day the sheriff asked me what I wanted to be basically when I grew up at 23 I said I wanted his job not right then but it, but I had no idea what that really consisted of uh, but as we went along I progressed into the chief deputy in 2017 and then natural progression uh, had no really other choice to become a, a politician uh, I still don't see myself as a politician I'm just a, a, de a department head that the best thing about being sheriff is every other top law enforcement official in the country is selected. The director of the FBI, obviously the Secret Service, uh, everyone in those police chiefs even are selected. And the sheriff being the chief law enforcement officer of the county only serves to one, and that's the people. And that's why I enjoy being sheriff more than a police chief because if I don't do a good job, it will tell in the polls. Uh, so I'm, I'm very, uh, that's kind of why I got into it. I'm very proud of the agency. We've uh, able to grow in the last two years. I was just elected uh, two years ago and looking forward to the next two years and hopefully after that. 
Thank you so very much. Thank and um, I'd like to um, say thank you to all you gentlemen for the service you do to the community. I know it's not easy, and uh, you're on the hot seat, which you're going to be in a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and thank you so very much. Okay, now what I'd like to do now is kind of open this up to questions from the audience. We have a microphone up here, um, and the people who would like to ask questions, I request that you line up on the other side over there. Um, that way it doesn't interfere with the camera. Um, <clears throat> once again, I'd request that you please keep your questions to one minute. And if you do have a second question, or you want to do a follow-up, by all means, but just join the back of the line. That way it's fair for everybody. And um, please make the questions succinct, to the point, and most importantly, respectful. That's my only request on that. So if anybody would like to line up and be the first to take the uh, the seat for the microphone here, by all means, please come up and join us. Nobody? All right, we're here. <laughs> okay, gentlemen over there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> could you state your name? Oh, when you come up, could you state your name too, please? I'd appreciate it. Hi, I'm Larry Foy's. I live here in the village. I have a probably a simple question, and I don't know if it's been asked before. I've been here only two years. The traffic light that we have in the village on 444, is there any chance that like maybe at eight o'clock at night it can go to flashing red, flashing yellow? Because there's like nobody driving around at that time. Well, 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 that, that, that's a state route. That, that's actually under control of TDOT. Uh, Lowell Russell would be a great resource there. Okay. He says that's his number one okay. subject is TDOT. So uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sure if you reach out to Representative Russell's office, he'd be glad to at least try to help you with it. Okay, thanks. Sure. Sheriff Davis, what's your feeling on that? Oh, Jenny, you have one. <laughs> I, I agree as well. It is obviously a state route. I know there's uh, some talk about some provisions in uh, 444 and some roundabouts and thing in, in the future. Uh, traffic is always a big concern, especially with 444. Mm. Okay, thank you so very much. And your name is, sir? Could, can you turn your microphone on? Just press. Uh, I understand the state legislature recently passed an anti-squatters law. I wonder what your advice to us is as to how you will enforce that. And should we drive around in our car with a copy of our deed? So if we go back to our house and there are squatters in there, we can show you the deed and you'll immediately evict them? Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. No. Uh, I've, actually, I saw some of the things in the national news about squatters, and I was just appalled that nothing was being done about that. We actually had an incident in Lenore City, on just inside the county in Lenore City, where a gentleman had actually let a couple of people camp in his front yard for a couple of days, and then they became belligerent, started trashing his property, and wanted them removed. Well, apparently they felt they had a right to be there because he gave them permission. Well, with given permission, you also have to write the right to withdraw that. And uh, we made them move pretty quick because they, they did not set up a residency. They didn't receive mail there. And that's one thing, utilities and receiving mail is big uh, on being able to say you have a right to be there or you have at least a legitimate reason to be there. So uh, if it's proven, it's pretty easy to prove someone owns a property that we can prove that, we'll immediately move them from the property. Thank you. Susan? My name is Susan Gingrich. I brought a question for each of you. So Sheriff Davis, I'll start with you because you have the easy one. Great. Uh, okay, make them quick then because just be one question, so. How many gangs are active in Loudoun County and what are you doing to protect citizens? Uh, I don't know the exact number, but there are multiple gangs inside Loudoun County. We've seen signs of that on the upper end of the county in the Lenore City and the Knox County line with uh, tagging and things of that nature. Uh, we have a deputy or he's a sergeant detective that is from Riverside, California, that was in the gang unit in California. And we have started an initiative and uh, he is supervising that. We've given him uh, additional training in the gang field. So he is starting a somewhat of a mini task force within our agency that will collect uh, data uh, of agency. We have that, we're starting to put that on our reporting that if they're gang affiliated and once they come in our correction facility, if it's a correction facility we interview them, see if they're gang affiliated. If they are, we document that, their tattoos, their affiliation, uh, and that's in our records for future, so. 
we're trying to keep track of it. And uh, so far, there hasn't been any gang on gang violence that we know of, but we do know they're here and we're, uh, we're keeping an eye on it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right, Susan, we give you the benefit of the doubt this time, <laughs> but we still we want to keep it to one minute, so keep them very precise. They're, okay? they're very short. Okay. Okay. Um, Commissioner Cullen, how long have you been chairman? 2018. Thank you. Now, can you please tell me? Uh, one question? Okay. Uh, oh. let's, move on. let's move on now. Let's ask, let's ask uh, Mayor Brad your question. We're trying to keep it to one minute here. Susan. Okay, I'll get back in line then for my next Okay, that's question. fine. Okay, yeah, by sure. all means. Uh, Mayor Bradshaw, if you recall, I've commented publicly and asked for years for the county to improve its website so that it is more helpful to citizens, especially taxpayers. To date, despite appointing a committee years ago, nothing has been done. Why? Well, we had a, the committee itself, I stepped away from it, the committee itself brought back a proposal uh, to commission, uh, and it, it was not funded. Um, so, I mean, it wasn't funded, that's, that's the whole thing. I have, for, I'll tell you, for 10 years, I've tried to get a new website going. Um, you look, when we, you know, our original uh, IT guy was outstanding, worth, well, he left for more money because he was worth five times what we were paying him. Um, he didn't have time to do it as good as he was. We looked at a contractor, outside contractor. There was no funding to be had. And, you know, and I, I, I can't just sign the check or agree without uh, funding allocated from the county commission. Okay. Thank big, you, Susan. Big disappointment. Thank now you. Now may I ask? No. Please, I'm going to get someone else up here first, okay? Um, actually, I'd like to ask a question. So could you take a seat, please, Susan, sure. just, just so that we keep this in order. Thank you. Um, Actually, I have a question um, primarily for you, Mayor Bradshaw, and this has got to do with the school tax. You knew this was coming. Okay. One of the things that Governor Lee is trying very much to do at the moment is to get a school voucher program going. Now, this was defeated, but um, reading the tea leaves or whatever you want to, I think that this is going to reappear relatively soon. And my question is very simply, when the plans were made for a new school, new high school, was it taken into account that there may be a significant drop in student enrollment because of this? You know, some of, our, some of the research from independent sites where the school voucher programs have gone in have shown a drop in um, school, public school attendance, almost up to 20, 25%. And do you think this is a concern that should have been approached by Loudoun County Commission? In this curse and this is probably for mr Curran as well well I, I think ultimately it's a great question for the board of ed uh, they're the ones that, that brought the request to commission mm -hmm. and i'm not throwing the board of ed under the bus at all that's, i don't that's not how i operate the I, I don't i'm not a fan of the vouchers at all <laughs> it'll surprise me if it goes through and the talks original talks for the school have been going on since 2021 mm -hmm. um I'm not an expert on it. I, I don't think the impact would be as great here as it would be in some other schools. Despite the state's numbers, we have pretty good schools here. Oh yeah. They have they've they've treated the numbers, and it's just how you it's how you you know if you want to have a greater um, if you want to have a greater uh, poverty rate, then you mm -hmm. raise the poverty level. Yes. You know I think that's happened a lot right here, but I, no more private schools that we have. I don't necessarily think uh, it'll be a huge impact plus if you look at the difference in the county and the city schools, the county schools actually outperform mm -hmm. the, city, the city schools even on the skewed test that the state has. Okay. Um, that would, be, But I would encourage, you know, definitely take that up to the board of ed, ask your, mm -hmm. your school board members. Henry, what's your thought on that? As you're on the commission, I'm going to throw it at you now. Isn't that nice you know, of me? I don't know if the school voucher will make it through the Senate. Mm -hmm. So, I don't think that's a factor right now. If it does happen, remember, if you go to a private school, you're going to get part of the money. The rest of the money is on you. That may not work out too well in Loudoun County. Mm -hmm. So, I didn't take that into account. What I took into account was 
Did they make a solid business plan to support a hundred million dollar bond issue? And they did, as far as I was concerned. Mm -hmm. And no, I didn't have to bow to the altar of Van Shaver. I voted no. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, <laughs> sir. Yes. Thank you. My name is Jim Stevenson, and. I'm going to ask the question about, uh, I think there's an elephant in the room that nobody's talking about. We, and I'm talking about all of the people here that live in Teleco Village, we've been insulted by Van Shaver. He's called us with, you know, people with pitchforks and torches. We've been called carpetbaggers. We're just a source of tax money for the commission, and I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy about the educational performance. You're within 35, 45% proficiency. That's disgusting. You shouldn't be happy about it. I look at all of the people that showed up to protest the fact that you didn't have sufficient data to justify a $115 million tax levy. And yet, 40% of the commission said, no, we're not going to support that. But the rest of you guys voted it in, and, and, and you went ahead and approved it. And I'm, I'm like, I'm not talking to Henry. Good buddy, you approved it. Many of us have filed complaints with the state comptroller's office, fraud, waste, and abuse. We want an investigation on this. I want to see how you justified it. The Board of Education, the commissioners, you all seem to be in the back pocket of somebody. I don't know where the effort is coming from. I don't know if it's being pushed by Van Shaver, who's so rude to people, especially women. I can't believe how he talks down to women at these meetings, and he's not called out on it. And I think that, you know, the chairman of the, of the commission should put him in his place and tell him to knock off this crap. So anyway, I'm not happy. There's a movement in, in, in Loudoun County right now to get a mass of people together to either throw you people out of office. But I think a lot of your meetings are not going to be peaceful and quiet. We the people have a voice. And you guys told us, you made it very clear, you didn't care about we the people. And all you had to do was say, let's go do a study. A $100,000 study is one one thousandth of that $115 million that we're going to be taxed. And you didn't even look to approve that, to come up with the real reasons why we needed a school. We have less students here now than we had in 2006. Yet we need a brand new school. And where are we going to put it? Up in Lenore City. Are you kidding me? Within about two miles from other schools. Jim, I'm going to have to cut you off here. And I appreciate your input. No, and seriously. Okay. And we value your, um, you know, your input. I do. I'm trying to keep the questions to a minimum. I think you guys are on the hot seat. And I appreciate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are on the hot seat. And, uh, I think the question was, if, if, I can, if I can actually put that question into a different wording, um, and I understand Jim's frustration is did the I, I, I don't want to get involved in the situation with Van Shaver and the, that story. I think the question comes down to is do you feel that enough research was put into the decision to put forth this bond request or do you think that it should have taken some more time and I do understand the situation where you might have had the ability to veto that, okay, but that was yeah, yeah. But uh, may, uh, there were some legal questions on that. Okay, and you'll be more. I'd love, love to hear an answer yeah, to that. Well, mm. the uh, the board of education was a unanimous vote that that felt like that's what they needed for the Loudoun County schools. Mm -hmm. uh, ten out of ten uh, board of education members did so. There's a lot of faith in the mayoral veto. The mayoral veto is not like the presidential or even the gubernatorial. It doesn't take a a uh, super majority to overturn the mayoral veto. It takes six votes. How many commissioners voted for it? Six. At the most, it might have delayed it a little bit, and that's just until a call, they could have a call meeting to override the veto. I stayed on either side of this. I did not out and lobby for it. I did not get out and lobby against it because there's a surprising, I know out here, it's not popular at all. Trust me, I know. I've got 500 emails or so telling me this much. Uh, 
But at the same time, if you go down to the lower end of the county, it is popular. They do believe it's necessary. If you go on the upper end, they, they think it's necessary. And this is, just, you know, this is probably the, 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 the hardest decision I've done since probably the mask mandate to do it or not, mm -hmm. uh, with me sitting in my chair. But it was easily overridden, and it would have been, like I said, it would have stretched out the animosity that much longer. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, like I said, 10 out of 10 commissioners, we thrive as a republic. This county thrives as a republic. And that was the Republic majority is the one, the Republic, the Republic system, Republic majority is, is how it happened. Do uh, I agree with everything? Probably not. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, those folks are elected to make a recommendation. County commission is elected to make a, Thank you. whether to fund it or not. Thank I appreciate you. that. I, I do want to make one comment on that if I can. Um, it's very interesting. You know, the Democratic, the, the thing I've heard about this is that we have no children here. Why are we worried about a high school? Well, I, Demographics here are changing dramatically, okay? Um, in the time that I've been here, I have school buses going down my road in Malaco now. You know, it's changing, and we can't necessarily use that hide our head in the sand thing. But that's my own personal opinion. It has nothing to do with the board. I should have been there doing that. Yes, yeah, sure. And I'll be very brief. Loudoun County itself, we've put the brakes on this development. The uh, commission has taken action, you know, a1 is a minimum five acre lot. You can't even do a planned unit development anymore in Loudoun <laughs> County yeah. unless you're inside city limits. Now, we put our brakes on, we don't control what the city's doing. I'm not gonna second guess the cities because those are duly elected officials as well. But Loudoun County has done what they can do, everything they can do to put a stop to some of this mass development coming in. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, I appreciate that. Ma'am, would you like to come up to the, the podium there and give us your name? Hi, my name is Mercedes Worsing. And I'm going to give you, I, w I want to find out if you've really considered the research of, first of all, I'm going to speak on behalf, I am a retired public school teacher. And I want to make sure that everyone in the community has done their research on the declining enrollment that we have been facing nationwide and also the shortage of teachers that we are facing because many, teach, many young teachers don't want to go into it because of all the social issues that our young people are facing. And it's a lot of stress for them. Um, the other thing is the teachers that have retired, many of my friends are not in public schools substituting because of the curriculum, the lack of respect, and the cell phones have destroyed our young people. The other thing is, now if you go forward with the building of a new high school and the addition and everything, and mind you, we have only been here a year, so it's hard for me to make an honest opinion. And I believe in public education, and I believe in homeschooling and private schools. But you need to be aware, as our community goes forward, the inflation. I've seen what school districts have gone through during inflation, economic turndown, the layoff of 40 teachers in a school district, and also the fact that a lot of school districts want to be heavy with administrators, but yet there's no money for textbooks. Okay, Mercedes. So have school. you done your research you. and also consider the location because I think back of my school districts that I have taught where we've had students that have been killed because of the traffic and a beautiful, wonderful policeman in Michigan that was injured very seriously trying to help it at the high school. The other question for- Ma'am, Mercedes, we really need to keep it to one okay. question. And could you, could you restate your question a little bit more concisely? Have you done your research on the decline in enrollment that we are facing, especially now that we have had more parents pulling their student, their children out of public schools to homeschool and put them into public schools. Thank you, Mercedes. And by all means, join the line again to ask us another question. Please do. Gentlemen. You want me to take that one? <laughs> to answer your question, when this all started, I got Mike Garrett. I got Matt Tinker. And I said, guys, 
you've got to put a business case together that justifies why you want to spend $100 million. We'll do it. I said, when you do it, you got to come to the village. You got to come to the commission meeting. In addition, he went to the conservative club. I met him that morning at the conservative club. And before he got to the podium, I said to him, this is your one chance fancy, don't let me down. He fell on his face. And that's not being impolite. He didn't make the business case. And I'm going to tell you, 34 years, if I went in front of the big bosses and explained to them I needed $100 million and I couldn't prove it beyond a reasonable doubt, I'd have left with my banker's box, put your company car keys on the counter, and you're done. They didn't do it. Now let me tell you part two of it. As chairman, when we were adopting the budget, there's three sections we go through. First one's the appropriations. The second one is to set the tax rate. And the third one is to take care of the nonprofits. When it came time, there was a motion made to move the tax rate from 15183 to 17683 to cover the new school. The motion got a second. It was Van Shaver, Gary Whitfield made the motion. There was no further discussion, and it was a roll call vote. And when you call a roll call vote, each commissioner is elected to represent their district. They are duly elected, and they vote as they feel best for their constituents and their districts. It went six to four. Was I disappointed? Yes. Didn't think we should spend $100 million without a good study and all the things that went into it. But. Part of being on the commission is each one's a duly elected commissioner. They made the vote. I have to accept it and roll on. Period. Hope that answers your question. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Next question, please, sir. Hi, Joel Reed, Teleco Villages. Questions for Henry. Can you tell us about the pros and cons of incorporating a Teleco Village? The reason I ask is yesterday a very egregious water bill was put on us, uh, $80 a month, doubling it from 80 to 160 a month um, without even having root cause for these problems. And the decision makers, none of them were engineers, none of them approached or asked for that. As a matter of fact, they said they can't turn down a recommendation from a committee because they're not engineers. Can you please tell us the pros and cons? I'm going to take you through it. This is going to take a few seconds. All right. When you look at Teleco Village, can you open your microphone, please? My wife tells me I got a big mouth anyway, sorry. But anyway, when you look at Teleco Village, it is just another subdivision in Loudoun County. No different than Rarity Bay, Wind River, Miller's Landing, and Avalon. Those are the upscale subdivisions. And I hear everybody, in fact, I heard it tonight, we're that cash cow for Loudoun County. We contribute $8.6 million in property tax. We budget property tax at 97%, never 100. We are 23% of the unincorporated part the rest of the unincorporated part is 47%. We didn't even make the top 10 taxpayers. Tennessee National did, Wind River, and the Cove out by Creekwood. Now, here comes the rub. Why don't we get any tax dollars back for all we pay? Well, let's see. 
Commissioner Cullen, you have asked our firm for an opinion regarding the legalities of Loudoun County, Tennessee, donating taxpayer funds to homeowners associations or property owners association that are exempt from taxation pursuant to section 501 C4. Remember that C4 is very important. That is a social welfare nonprofit. The answer to that question is controlled by Tennessee codes annotated. 5-9-109. Property owners, and I won't read it, Susan has a copy of it. Property Owners Association and Homeowners Association do not meet the foregoing standards because they do not operate primarily for the purpose of bringing about civic betterment and social improvements. Therefore, Loudoun County may not lawfully donate taxpayer funds to those organizations. That's the answer. Now, Joel asked about incorporating. Here is the TCA governing incorporation. Nowhere on these pages does it say this excludes Teleco Village in Loudoun County. So let's take a look at it. And there's been a lot of things. Kevin Stevens put out this big thing in 19, why we couldn't incorporate. Let me tell you what the bottom line is. First of all, we would qualify for a 5,000 person residence. We would qualify for a modified city manager. The TCA, if you want to write it down, is 6 30 103. And the thing they always hang their hat on is we're three miles to Lenore City, three miles to Loudoun City. And it says right here you can't incorporate, especially if the population of either city is 100,000 or more. But it's references TCA 658-104, plan growth area, or as we know it, the urban growth boundary. We're not in Lenore City's urban growth boundary, nor Loud. In order for it to pass, and they annex us, which is what they're all concerned about, it'd have to come to the commission, and it says, it has to be approved by the county commission. In 2005, buddy helped me out, there was an interlocal agreement signed by the three mayors. And it says if you go beyond your urban growth boundary to annex, it has to come to the commission. We have one going right now in Lenore City where they went beyond their growth boundary and annexed it didn't come to the commission, it's in court right now. So that's the factors behind that. Now what has to happen? This is gonna be a heavy lift. It's gonna require a lot of work. But if you looked at yesterday, if we were incorporated, that never would have happened. We'd have had access to state grants, TDEC grants, federal grants, we'd have our tax rate, we'd have access to municipal bonds, and a lot of other benefits. We have to have a petition. There's 8,200 registered voters in District 1 and District 7. I need a third of those to sign a petition. When that gets done, we take it over to Susan Harrison, she verifies the signatures, the addresses, and okay, so. Then it would go on to a referendum. The earliest one we could get on would be May 2026. If the majority of the village votes for it, it's over. Welcome to the city of Teleco Village. That's what it takes. Now the other thing they'll throw at us is, well, you got Tahiti. 
Yes, we got Tahiti, it's over in Monroe County. But I believe, working with Buddy, Mitch Ingram, the mayor of Monroe County, Mayor Hammond Tree of Von Orr, Lowell Russell, Monty Fritz, Ken Yeager, Randy McNally, and who the new senator is going to be from Monroe County, we could get that handled. Now, what happens after you become a city? Goodbye, POA. You're now a city. Duly elected mayor, councilman, and you're off and running. You're now a city. Recognition in Nashville. And if you believe it, Greenback and Philadelphia have more clout in Nashville than a subdivision. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. The problem is, it takes a while to get it done. And you saw what happened yesterday. I'm not getting into that. Poor Mike Braddock will have a heart attack. Well, I put an AED on him. But what you got is the second assessment. There's no limit to how much they can raise it or how long it's going to be. And they got around the 5%. I would say if it's challenged in a court of law, Article 4 that talks about special assessment, It'll be ruled a special assessment. Yeah. So there you go. I hope I've answered everything. And if it was up to me and I was running this place, we'd be a city already. Thank you so much. Um, we gave you extra time there because that is an important issue that many people have a good questions about. And thank you. I think you gave a very, very good, concise answer to that. Thank you very much. Another person coming up here for a question was there? Was there? Okay, we get your second question now, Susan. Just a comment. The best thing about annexation or incorporation is that the county would get less of our money. Hmm. Um, Commissioner Cullen, this was my question for you. Can you tell me which state or federal statute permits you to silence the public from making comments as you have me and others, women in particular, in the past. I have never silenced anybody. I did tell you to sit down because mm -hmm. I didn't want a personal attack. Mm -hmm. Yes, but we, we have never, mm -hmm. never shut anybody down. Yes, you Susan, get up, I, you talk to it, you got your five minutes. Yeah. I told you when you stood up that night, you make a personal attack, I'm going to tell you to yeah. sit down. Yeah. I'm, uh, thank you, Susan, but I'm inclined to, we're trying to keep this very respectful. I understand your concerns, but we do want to try and keep it within a certain realm of order here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it, Mr. Collin. Next up, sir. Oh, I see you again. <laughs> yes, Jim Stevenson again. Question number two. And I'm going to go back to the meeting that we had. The, and by the way, I've, I was a naval weapons officer on a nuclear submarine. My kids are FBI agents. I understand, respect law enforcement, whatnot. But what I saw at that meeting disgusted me when Scotty, what was his name? Scotty Newman. So once again, we want to keep personal attacks out of this. It's not an attack. It's a statement uh, well, of fact. Scotty okay. Newman went up to one of our commissioners who mm -hmm. called out a conflict of interest. Okay. So I'd like to have that whole thing explained, the conflict of interest and why Scotty Newman, in uniform with a gun, was allowed from the school board. He's a member of the school board. Mm -hmm. He was allowed to go up to one of the county commissioners that voted against the tax. Okay. Uh, and I cuss that person out right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I, I'll, I'll get them to answer that, but you know, that's fine. I've got the question answered here for you, but we do want to keep it. That's buried. my second question. Thank okay, you. thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Okay. Meeting was over. Yeah. Hang on a second, ma'am. Do you want to answer that? I, I wasn't at the meeting, so I don't know what was going on there. So, any volunteers? I, I don't know exactly what was said. I've seen it on video, don't know what was said. It was post-meeting in the midst of the chaos, everybody getting up and leaving. Um, if the gentleman 
that he spoke with felt threatened, he's certainly entitled to file a complaint with the police department. Mm -hmm. Well, that was uh, Will Jenkins, and he did make the comment that he was cussed at by the police officer. So I think you guys need to look into that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Ma'am, what is your name? Any question, please? Thank you. Yes, my name is Linda Fall. I live in Teleco Village, and my question is for Commissioner Cullen. Um, my only familiarity between some of the differences between living in an incorporated area and an unincorporated area is was within the state of Illinois. And generally, when you lived in, in an unincorporated area, you had a advantage of lower of a lower tax rate. Uh, there are certainly advantages that I can see from becoming incorporated for Teleco Village, but uh, just what kind of an impact would that have on our property taxes? Well, first of Thank all, you. you become an incorporated city, you'll still pay county taxes. And Jimmy's guys will still ride through the neighborhood Run a beam out on the parkway if you've gotten a ticket. So you'll still have police. Okay. We got the best fire department. Yes. We have our own public works. Our sewer and water system now is a municipal system because we're a city. Roads are now municipal roads. You'll be tax free, no sales tax. You'll get state and federal grants. You can now buy on the state contract, which is a lot less when you buy a white pickup truck. <coughs> so there are a million advantages. And the biggest advantage is now that you got 176 and 80 bucks on top of that, you're going to write a check and it's done. Okay. You incorporate your city taxes are now deductible. And in 2025, when, and I hope he wins, I'm, believe me people, I'm on the truck train. <laughs> if he wins, it'll stay. That's that increased exemption, personal exemption. It's like what, 31,000 now? The standard, standard, standard deduction. deduction. When that drops down, and the tax rate changes if somebody else gets in, you're going to look for that tax deduction. Absolutely. So there's your answer. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am. Actually, I'd like to ask a question. I, you're, you're looking so quiet over there, Sheriff. He's, he's smart. I know, no, no. Okay. Smart. I'm not going to let him gay with that because I, I want to watch something kind of off the wall here. Um, I'm a boater. No escalate. <laughs> I'm a boat. I'm a boater like many other people in here. I'm on T-Bart. And the one thing that I've noticed more and more is the, I'm sure everybody else has seen this too, is the amount of increase of drinking and boating on our lake. Um, it's getting out of hand, especially. And I understand that the sheriff has a certain amount of responsibility to monitor this. But honestly, I don't know what the sheriff's department has that could help in maybe controlling this issue of drunken driving, boating. boating. Sorry, drunken boating. Could you give us an idea what the sheriff can and cannot do and what's within your resources? Uh, it becomes a jurisdictional thing. Obviously, the sheriff's office has jurisdiction everywhere. Uh, the a vessel on the waterways is primarily to TWRA, Tennessee Wildlife, and that's the, generally their responsibility to to manage that. Mm -hmm. uh, we can assist them. Uh, we have a vessel uh, that has been having some problems lately. That's why we're not on the lake now. Uh, this budget year was not the year to ask for a new boat. <laughs> no. Uh, that's why I've been quiet over here. <laughs> Stay out of the mess. Uh, but this year was not an appropriate year, I felt, to do that because we do have working relationships with TWRA. Uh, TVA is getting back in the game a little bit, Tennessee Valley Authority. Years ago, they got rid of their uh, patrol division and all became inspectors after the big ash spill. Uh, but they're starting to get back into the law enforcement game a little bit. Uh, so that would be, they would be primarily or secondary on, on the waterways. But we're always there to assist uh, if need be. 
but primarily it's TWRA. Okay, thank you. I was, I, that was an educational question for myself. I wasn't sure. Maybe something else. Sir, would you like to come on up and ask a question, please, sir? And give us your name, please. I have. My name is Ed Heilman. I've lived here for 26 years. I've seen this place change dramatically. You bet. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily for the best, not recently anyway. The thing is, I've not had a bad time here. I don't have a bad time with the people that live here. I don't have a bad time with the people that have been here. But there are some things that need to be changed. Henry's 100% right. One has to be that we got to get our control ourselves of this village. We have no control whatsoever in this village right now. None. Sir, do you have a question? If you could put this in the form of a question. All right. Where's you. your money going? There's a question. Not with them. It's not going with them. It's going to the POA. Well, we have, we have no representative from the POA here today. That's not my know. problem. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised that there's not anybody here. I would have thought they'd been around the, the walls. Mm -hmm. But I'll be leaving right now. I'll let somebody else talk. I've had all i got to say. It's a great place to live. It's proved to be a good place to live. But we're not getting our money's worth. Period. And I, I really appreciate you coming up and asking that question because all the questions are important. Unfortunately, we don't have someone that could really answer that here. But thank you very much for asking it. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kimberly Brown, and I believe my question would be directed to Sheriff. Um, let, I'll give you a what if scenario. What if we, Telco Village, were to become incorporated? Mm -hmm. And what if we would need additional law enforcement assistance? Is, is that something that could be contracted with your office? I don't know if it'd be contracted or not. We have a re always a request for more police presence in Philadelphia and Greenback, and I feel we would treat Teleco Village the same as if we, we were in those areas. Uh, we are been very blessed over the past couple of years since I've been uh, sheriff to get our request. We've, been, we've got quite a few new officers uh, to keep up with the growth. So, I mean, hopefully we can have more. We've even changed our shifts so we can have more patrol presence. Uh, so having it incorporated, we would just, as far as the sheriff's office, it wouldn't really change anything. We would still answer calls and, uh, I mean, that's what I tell, I've had a conversation with the police chief. The city's in the county and they pay county taxes as well. So I have an obligation to city residents just as much as county residents, in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, I know this gentleman. <laughs> I hope I'm not wearing out my welcome. Mm -hmm. What's that? I'm asking if it's got a question. Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> question number three. All right. Now, I'm not sure if everybody knows about this, but I'm going to ask the question to you guys after I finish giving this background here. In 1964, U.S. Supreme Court ruled in the decision New York Times versus Sullivan. And what happened last year, our governor in Tennessee codified it into law for the state of Tennessee. And what it says is that debate that we have within our government circles says may well include vehement, caustic, and sometimes unpleasantly sharp attacks on government and public officials. So with that said, it is state law. It's U.S. Supreme Court. It was unanimously voted on by the state, the Supreme Court in the state of Tennessee, by the way. And my question is, why does that not apply to the commission meetings, which is a government meeting? I think it would apply. I think you have every right to hear the complaints of the people that come up and talk to you guys. And if you feel like you need to shut down somebody's comment because you don't like it or you think they're a little pointed, a little rude to somebody, that's sorry, but that's your First Amendment right. U.S. Supreme Court and the state of Tennessee codified. So I'd like you to answer that and how you think you can limit our freedom of speech. Thank you. I appreciate Thank that. Thank you. 
Jim, I don't think we limited your freedom of speech. No, not you mine. came. <laughs> you came to the 24th meeting, hey. lined up with the rest of them. We did with our pitchforks and our torches. We did. <laughs> and I got out of there without a med flight. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. Personal attacks, they're off limits. I'm sorry. Well, that's not what the Supreme Court ruled. Okay, Jim, I, I understand that. But it said sharp attacks on government and public officials. Mm -hmm. We're allowed to do that. Yes. However, I'm going to interrupt here because I want to say something. Yes, because I've had a lot of background in this particular business for the law. I was in law enforcement involving a lot of this with the state government, and it was a different state. Yes. They are allowed to do that by all means, but there's a thin line between discourse and discontent, for want of a better term to put it. And I, no, I, please let me, let me just finish here because I'm not really supposed to be speaking on this, it's for this gentleman. But my experience has always been that yes, every organization by all means wants to have good, honest conversations and situations like that. But at the point, and I've been in meetings where at some point or another it's become disruptive, and at that point it's a requirement of the moderator or whoever's running it to say enough is enough. And yes, I, you know, if there's a personal problem between two people, have a private discussion and do it that way. Okay? That's just my personal opinion. I shouldn't be saying that because I'm just the moderator here. But I understand what you're saying. I do want to say one other quick thing too. That particular statute is required in public arenas. Okay, I do want to say that it's in public arenas and public places, not in private locations. Correct. Okay. I'm, I'm not saying it applies here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted no. to clarify that. But part. when we go down to the annex or whatever, we want to speak to the yeah. commission. We oh, can have way. sharp attacks. Yeah. Okay. So on I these think, public officials. Yeah. And I really appreciate all your feedback on this, but I am going to move on because. You know, I, and I appreciate your opinions, but you know, we have to move on just a little bit. And Thank I you. would be upset too. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I waited till now to come up. My name is Gary Bush. <laughs> I live in I live in District Seven of Loudoun County because I make a clarification because Telegal Village has a bad name with many of the commissioners that sit on the commission. And what I want to say is my disappointment in the vote that happened the other day was the fact that, as I said Monday night, six of the commissioners really didn't go out to there and give the opportunity to have Mike Guerin go out to their districts and present what he presented to, to this district. If he, he would have, guess what? They would have got the same feed, feedback because what we're seeing across all seven districts is 85% of the people don't know anything about this tax and didn't re hear about it and don't even know about the school. So I'm gonna change gears. I just wanted to clarify that with you, buddy, and that's it, because that's where my disappointment was that the brakes weren't put on this to make sure the people really knew, because they don't. Secondly, that, that's because it's not only gonna hurt us, it's gonna potentially put some people in Loudoun City, Lenore City, potentially out of their house with all the taxes that are going on right now and the inflation. The, the people that can't afford it are going to be put out, and that's not, and that is a negative for anybody. I don't see how anybody can sit here and, and raise the taxes in spite of Teleco Village, and that's the way it came across. But I do have a question more for Jimmy. <laughs> okay. One of, the key th one of the key problems, and you and I have talked about this, is the fentanyl coming across the border, the illegal... It, we can call them what they are now because I believe we'll have a president that'll call them illegal aliens again uh, coming up in 2025. But again, the illegals coming across the border, the gangs, you mentioned the gangs that are coming. Fentanyl is a major problem because it's being called a drug and it's not a drug, it's a poison. Um, the death, how it can kill is poison. What's the rate uh, in happening right now as far as how many deaths or calls are you seeing and verse year over year well, how has it been increasing in Loudoun County and with that the the opioid funds that we know are in the budget how do we ensure that money gets spent on 
preventative stuff to protect our kids going forward. Right. Uh, over the last few years, obviously, fentanyl has come on uh, with a vengeance. Uh, a lot of it is coming. Uh, our narcotics unit uh, really tries to attack the source of it. Uh, a couple of years ago, they put, if you can backtrack a, a death uh, by fentanyl or any other means, uh, you can charge that person with a sec second degree homicide. So our narcotics division, we have a criminal investigations division made up of seven detectives. We have a narcotics division made up of four detectives. And we are starting, the narcotics division is working more homicides than the criminal investigations divisions because of the, the overdoses. Uh, that, that obviously is a problem and takes a lot of manpower to do that. So we're investigating uh, and uh, unfortunately doing more, it seems like, reactive work than proactive work. So what we tend to do on that is, is uh, education, obviously. Uh, I plan to have a meeting soon with a Buddy to talk about the opioid funds, what exactly they are intended to use for. I have some programs in mind. We're starting a program uh, within the jail uh, for reentry of those that are in jail for substance abuse issues. Uh, we just passed a GED. We just passed our first two GED people, uh, got their GEDs, the first ever have come out of the, the correction facility in the last six months. Uh, I'll sign a, me a memorandum of understanding uh, with a line nine, which is through the DA's office, that deals with a lot of resources to help people reenter back into the community. Uh, my feeling and my philosophy is if we can keep those from reoffending and get those people out of those situations that they came from, uh, they won't reoffend, which means they don't come back to jail and we don't have victims of crimes. Uh, the investigation on those is, is very time consuming. And the investigations thus far we've had in a lot of our overdose deaths are the drugs are just coming in in personal use size. Uh, Detroit, I'll just tell you, is a major source out of Knoxville. So the bulk of the fentanyl is coming from Detroit, coming to Knoxville, and into our county uh, and using it that way. And unfortunately, we've had people go to Knoxville, a couple, uh, short story, a couple was coming back. They both got fentanyl. Uh, the passenger in the car, the female, took her fentanyl and overdosed. Well, they had Narcan, which reversed it. She, her husband going down the road gave her Narcan and saved her life. They only had one Narcan when he got home in Philadelphia. He used his fentanyl and he, he died. Uh, so that's the cases that were coming and then we're chasing those calls all the way, or chasing those sources all the way back into other counties, which makes it more difficult as well. Uh, our numbers, have seemed to have leveled off pretty much on overdoses. We were probably working, I would say, probably 11 to 12 active investigations of uh, overdose deaths. <coughs> but we uh, go through a grant process with a line nine in the DA's office where we all of our officers carry Narcan on their bodies uh, and in their cars. Uh, I make it mandatory that they carry it on their person because of self-preservation uh, for the officer. And, and then they also can render aid quickly uh, with one dose. Unfortunately, the, uh, the amount of doses or the large dose that the individuals are taking will take up to three and four doses of Narcan just to get them back. And if I had to say, uh, we've probably, we're probably doing about, on average, two to three dispenses of Narcan a week. Sorry, but remember I wanted to say something too. I, I, I Gary, uh, uh, the, at the budget meeting at the third Monday in August, uh, whether it's at three or four, we haven't decided yet. Uh, I forget the young lady's name from the Smart Initiative. I don't know if they're affiliated or part of CTAS. She's going to come down and lay out some of the guidelines we can actually spend the opioid money on. Of course, that's open meeting to the public. Thank you so much. Okay, so would that be something that I could bring somebody in to present to the, the committee on a well, this, preventative this, program for the kids? Because and how well, this to is going to be an kids. overlay of how the money can spend. Yeah. We can set that up for a later date, though, if yeah. you like. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Thank you. Next, please. Anybody uh, yeah. lady coming up to the podium here? Thank you. My name is Margie Kraft, and um, coming from a different community, I was expecting to have on the ballot whether we we're going to um, move forward with the new school. So I was kind of surprised that it was like a, a done deal. Can you just explain what the process is in this community? 
we operate under the 1957 Act. Uh, there's three different, well, there's private acts, the 81 Act, 57 Act, we operate under the 57 Act, True Republic. Um, our board of commissioners is 10, so any majority uh, of commission can, you know, whether it's something legislative, purchased, surrendered, whatever, a majority of those votes go. There's three uh, constitutional officers, myself, the sheriff, and highway superintendent, Billy Pickle. Uh, we're the three constitutional officers. Uh, they're fee office holders, and fee office, it's, it's an, kind of an older term, fee office, because used to they had to collect fees if they wanted to get paid and pay their people. And so, but everything in the annex is a fee, are fee office holders as well. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, it's a true republic. It takes six votes to accomplish anything. Myself, my office, of course, the sheriff's under all law enforcement. Uh, highway super, like I said, under the highways, the general fund, and uh, everything under my umbrella. Oh, my goodness. Uh, here we go. Finance, purchasing, uh, maintenance, codes enforcement, um, animal shelter, recycling. recycling center. Those are all under my umbrella. And so and I'll operate out of a centralized accounting, which is our finance department. Thank you so very much. You have a question, Chief? Oh, okay. I was going to comment on the last question. She asked what the process was. You explained kind of the facts about the government and all that stuff. Okay, that, how, please, please, I don't want any questions from the audience, but I'll go ahead and follow up on that for you. Um, yeah, what is, and I'm the same way. I'm from a different state where it's very different. You know, what is the actual procedure for putting this through to a, an elective? For, you know, elective cycle. You know, is there, a, is there a set routine about how tax increases have to be voted for by the, has voted for it against by the residents of the county? It can be placed on a referendum, and that, uh, not a lawyer, I don't know if that takes six votes of commissioners to put it on a referendum or how specifically that's done. Mm -hmm. I can find out and mm -hmm. be happy to send that back to you, though. Okay, I appreciate that, because I don't know that, because it seems to me like I, I get very confused sometimes about why it would take six votes to, okay, the six votes are required to promote it. You need the same six votes to put on for an election. That seems like it's a little contradictory to me, but that's just how I'm thinking about it from a different area. So no? It would be nice to know what, what qualifies as an item that needs to be put on the ballot as a reference. Okay. Henry, is that my... The exact rules, I, I'm not sure. I know, uh, looking on in my time here in Loudoun County, which is 52 years, um, I know whether at one point in time, back in maybe the early 2000s, there was a wheel tax on referendum. Um, I know the 2011 building program for the schools uh, was not referendum, it was voted as well. 6-4 vote from commission as well. Um, there's a process. But if I'd hate to tell you exactly what it was and to be wrong, mm -hmm. but with the, the republic system that we run in, the commission has a, a lot of power. They do have a lot of authority. Mm -hmm. That's why it's very important. Thank you. I know it's confusing to me as well. I came here from another state, and I still haven't worked out why we have three elections. You know. But anyway, that's a, that's another point here. Um, any more questions for anybody? Um, or are we? Oh, Margaret. Margaret. Okay, Margaret. This is Margaret. She is our chairman of our board. Please step up to the. Margaret you know Carroll, and I, I live here in the village. And I have a question that I've wanted to ask the sheriff for a very long time about what kinds of crime do you have? <laughs> he's, he's wavering on my telling something really racy about him, <laughs> which is the last time I saw him, he was dressed in a grass skirt. Y'all figure it out for yourselves. But I, I do have a, a serious question about crime within Teleco Village. We always think of crime as someplace else, and I'm not foolish enough to, to think that we are without sin in this village. What kinds of crime and what levels of crime does the Sheriff's Department see here? Uh, when it pertains to Teleco Village, uh, property crimes are crimes of more opportunity so you may have building sites, and we went through a rash a couple of years ago of building site thefts where they were stealing appliances and things of that nature, uh, toiletries or 
toilets and, and major appliances out, out of homes under construction. Uh, secondly, the most, the biggest problem would be uh, fraud and scams uh, because they potentially, they understand whether they're in local or not, usually they're not, uh, but they prey on those that may be retired and are able to manipulate uh, retirees maybe a little bit more. Uh, and the, I think they prey on uh, subdivisions or areas such as Telco Village where it's a large retirement community. And I think they prey on that. And uh, that's our biggest problem is scams and uh, fraud. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay, Mike, come on up. I was waiting. <laughs> Evening, gentlemen, Mike Lynch. Um, Mayor, in 2022, you accepted an invitation by this committee to be interviewed by them. And at the time, a question was asked of you that in light of all of the career experience here in the village, would you, if elected, call upon it to assist you in carrying out your responsibilities? And my question is, in the last year and a half, have you done that and with what frequency? And I don't mean to the village's executives and staff. I mean, I mean the career experience in this village as I said to you at the time, is more than exists in Oak Ridge. So I'm curious. Thank you, Mike. I, I, honestly, I don't know that I have. Um, you know, the biggest thing, of course, has been the school thing. Um, that's probably the biggest subject we've really had in the last year and a half. The, uh, you know, and I'll go back further than that. You know, when I first ran in 14, and I'm not avoiding your question. I don't think that I have. I'll be honest with you. You know, I was asked if, uh, if elected, would I be willing to put a member of Teleco Village on the TRDA committee? And as soon as there was an opening, Commissioner Cullen went. Uh, I think that, you know, and I get outside the village. I'll tell you right now, I do get harassed. I spend too much time out there. I spend too much time out there. I have made a conscious effort over 10 years to be out here as much as I could. I don't see y'all at ball games on Friday nights most of the time. I, uh, I now I do shop at Food Line every now and then, but I think y'all must go before I get there because it's never crowded. <laughs> but, you know, whether it's the conservative club being accessible and events like this, when I took office, I took office to serve the entire county. And not, that's from Blue Springs to Teleco Village, from Greenback to the Crossroads. And this school thing, it's split, and I'm telling you, it's split big. <coughs> And that was one of the reasons I stayed out of it, because I have to represent the whole county. I let commission do their thing, and what they do, it's my job up to me to enforce or enlist. Uh, you know, I had a gentleman, uh, I'm not going to say because he may not want me using his name, talk about I was one of the few people that said how much they appreciate the village. I recognize what the village is. I recognize what the village gives to Loudoun County. Uh, you know, we wouldn't have the success that we have as a county if it wasn't for the village. I'm not buttering y'all up, I'm shooting you straight. Uh, and they'll tell you, if anybody knows me, they'll tell you, I'm not a politician, I'm a public servant. Mayors aren't supposed to grow beards or wear cowboy boots or ride Harley Davidson's. <laughs> but I do. I am who I am. And when I ran in 14, it was to serve everybody. And whether you believe it or not, whether you like me or not, whether you're ready to run me out of town or not, I work my rear end off to do that every day. Thank and you. I will continue to do so Lord, as long as the Lord wants me in this spot. And I appreciate everything that the village brings to the county. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to throw my committee under the bus here for a minute, and and I cannot recall this, but I know we have a record of the number of hours committed to the county by the various groups within Teleco Village. I think it was you, wasn't it, Mike? Can you can you come talk about that real quick? Because you may have more up to date numbers. I was amazed how many volunteer hours does it's interpreted into yeah, that. If you we have for the audience, I'd appreciate it too. Between Monroe and Loudoun County, between the two, it was over four million dollars worth of volunteer hours. The vast majority in Loudoun County, somewhere about three point one or three, three and change, that uh, that the that was amassed by both counties, obviously in a huge variety of Lions Club, you know, Rotary Club, uh, churches. Um, just, you know, the knitting club, the toys for tots, you know, you can, the list goes on and on, but it was, uh, 
it was it was a huge. Uh, well, I'm going to do it again, so you'll get more information when I do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so be prepared, all you heads of organizations. You're going to get quizzed again. Okay, I recognize that guy, but we're going to make it. We're going to make this the last question because we're running late here. Question number four from Jim Stevens. Question number five. Is it? Is it five? I think it's four. Mm. Well, that's all right. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a retired engineer, 34 years with aerospace after the Navy. My question is to, to Buddy and uh, Mr. Mayor. You know, you just admitted, as everybody knows, it was a big controversial decision that had to be made. And rather than say, let's hold on it, let's do a study, let, let, let me veto this action. If the kids need the money, then they need the money. And I'll be the first one to say, let's do it. Let's, let's build those schools. But because there's so much controversy with it, why didn't you veto it and send it back and say, let's do that study? That's what we need. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 30 days. That's what it would have avoided. 30 days. You couldn't even get the RFQs out for it in 30 days before it would have been overridden. Um, six votes. Simple majority overrides the mayoral veto. It's not got the clout that it has. Um, I also, I believe in this republic that 10 out of 10 uh, Board of Education members felt this was the plan they need and six out of four of county commission did. You know, there's a reason I don't set, there's a reason I don't chair, because I like the definitive line between legislative and executive. I've said that since day one. And even if I had chaired and voted against it, it still would have been a six five, but Henry does a great job at chair and I support him with that. Um, 30 days, there'd probably been, I don't know if it'd been somebody fighting before 30 days was up. But it would have been a simple override to do it. If you Talk, we've not laid the brick, first brick. There's not been the first bit of concrete poured. I don't know if they've even dug a footer. I'm sure they've not. Reach out to your board of ed and talk to them. Speak with them. Uh, you know, this was the commission. This wasn't the commission's plan. This is a board of education plan. And I would reach out and talk to them and say, hey. I mean, the worst they're going to say is no. But you can maybe give an idea or maybe let's get their point of view or see what they're seeing. And it may be somebody along the way changed their mind. And have a conversation. Have a conversation is key. Yelling and screaming uh, doesn't very get very far. But have a conversation. Y'all have three out here. Uh, uh, Kenny, uh, hey, look, Presley. I know Kenneth for 40 yeah. years, and I forgot his name. You know, uh, Kenneth's a good guy. Uh, Scott Newman's accessible. Is Kenny Riding still in office? Yes. And Kenny Riding's he's outgoing, a board of ed member who's retired police officer as well. You know, have a conversation with them. Talk to them. I mean. There's nothing, I assure you, there's nothing this commission would rather do and say, hey, they changed their mind, let's back this tax back a little bit. But be civil with it when you do is all I ask. You know, it's, it's hot, it's heated, I know that. You get more flies with honey than you do with vinegar as well. But reach out and talk to them. You know, like I said, that, that's, and that's just, I, mean, that's, I believe in our democracy. I believe in our republic. Thank you. Good, okay. Um, Steve, I would like I'm going to make one other oh, comment. Oh, sure, sure, honey. In Tennessee, the county commission's sole responsibility is the county budget and to set the tax rate. That's how it works in Tennessee. Thank you. I would like to, first of all, thank you everybody for attending here today. Uh, but I'd especially like to thank these gentlemen here. Because, you know, they don't have to be here. They volunteer. And I, I really admire them. I really admire the fact that they will come here and they'll sit in a hot seat and take these questions. I wouldn't want to do it, but that's why I'm not a politician. But um, I would like to thank them. I know all, all three of these gentlemen and many others on the commission have always been very open for me to go to them and ask various questions if I go to the commission meetings. It's not, they're not isolationists. They want to know our people. They really do. That's very important. So I would like to thank them intently for being here today. I would like to thank everybody here for being very intently, following our new rules and being respective.
That's important. And I just want to say one more thing. Um, we like to have people coming to these meetings. We're glad you come. We're glad you're here. You're glad you ask questions. And it's a wonderful blessing to be living in this free country. I'm not, I wasn't born in this free country, but I came here out of choice and I love it, that we have the ability to do this. And for that, we should be very, very, very thankful. Thank you everybody for attending. And um, I'm sure they'll be hanging around for a few minutes before they run out the door if you want to call on them for any individual questions. Thank you so very much. Thank you.